Hi everybody, welcome to another video and today I'm going to be doing another sort of personal vlog video about me and the last one that I did was about dwarfism and whether I do actually think of myself as a dwarf and whether I actually have a kind of dwarfism and today I'm going to talk about something that is entirely separate to all of that and does not have any bearing on how I look and that is myotonic dystrophy. Myotonic dystrophy is a kind of muscular dystrophy and like any dystrophy it can change over time and can get worse over time. Currently there are no cures for muscular dystrophy so anyone with any kind of muscular dystrophy is living alongside with it. So I've formally had my diagnosis about 10 years. I got it when I was about 23. This was after thinking it over quite a lot and I knew that my dad has myotonic dystrophy also. He discovered it as a sort of, uh, I think when he was in his 40s he discovered that he carried this particular gene and my parents didn't tell me about it straight away. Although I knew about it, it wasn't until I was an adult that I really started to think, well, what if I have this too? And I had asked my parents before, and because I was asymptomatic at the time, they said that they didn't think I had it. However, once I'd had my first baby, Leo, and I realised how differently that story could have gone if I had indeed passed down my atonic dystrophy to Leo, then I took it upon myself to make sure that I had a diagnosis and so that I could manage my health in a way that could be supportive and proactive with myotonic dystrophy in particular and I can't really comment about any other muscular dystrophy with myotonic dystrophy it is highly variable so if you have myotonic dystrophy you may not have even been aware of it and unless you have a blood test, it may not show up at all. But for other people, they can have numerous symptoms which make life difficult um, and it can also lead to a shortened life expectancy. For me personally, my symptoms have always been very mild and they have continued to stay incredibly stable over the last 10 years since I've really been aware of it. I have not noticed any significant increase in my symptoms whatsoever, which I think is a good sign. I get checked up biannually, and they used to be every year, but they decided that I'm so well that they only need to see me every two years. And my consultant has said to me that she thinks that I have a particularly mild variety of it, which of course I feel very fortunate. So you might be wondering what are the main symptoms of myotonic dystrophy. So the main one is myotonia, which is where your muscles behave normally until you contract them and then actually they take a little bit longer to relax and not be contracted anymore. And this is most typically seen in the hands but I experience it in a few different areas of my body. I can experience it in my hands. I can also experience it in my shoulders, my neck, and actually my jaw and my tongue. It's usually when I haven't been using the muscles for quite a while, perhaps I've had a period of rest or idleness, and then I go to use the muscles, and it's actually that that activates the myotonia. It only lasts about a few seconds but I can feel it and it can affect the way that I talk. It can affect mostly my grip, which is very, very common. So for example, if I had to open something tight, like a jar, and I was exerting a lot of force to try and get that jar open, I might succeed in getting the jar open, but I would then have my hands kind of locked in this like claw-like position until eventually they decide to release. This symptom of myotonia is worse when I am cold, when I am stressed, or tired, or sick, which makes perfect sense. There isn't really anything I can do to prevent the myotonia, the myotonic dystrophy from progressing, but all I can do is try and stay as healthy as possible, as active as possible, 
and I am sort of looking into supplements and things that might help. So what does this mean going forward? So going forward, this means that I couldn't expect to see more symptoms in my lifetime. I could experience muscle weakness, muscle wasting, and because it is neuromuscular, it can also affect my brain, which obviously means that it can affect every single system in the body. Fun times. On the whole, I actually feel pretty optimistic about it. It's not something that I think about every day. I don't become depressed about it, but I am aware that it is something that I need to factor in and that I do need to look after myself as I get older and just day to day. I know that Fox has myotonic dystrophy. That was something that we tested for and we know that Fox has it too. Although, thank goodness at the moment, touch wood, he's very, very healthy because we were expecting an entirely different situation. And you can go and look at Fox's birth story and all of my pregnancy vlogs if you want. I've got a whole playlist, but that's from way back when. I don't know if Leo has it. And this is something that we will need to discuss with Leo when Leo is a little bit more of a at the right age, I think probably before Leo is 16, I would want to have the conversation about myotonic dystrophy. Does Leo want to know whether they have it or not? And also what this means if you have babies. Because although my children have been largely very healthy, for many mothers who don't know that they have myotonic dystrophy, they then go on to have a severely affected baby who might have congenital myotonic dystrophy, and in which case that is very serious. For now, I'm not planning to have any more babies. If you've been on my channel long enough, you will know that I had a third baby, and that is, uh, that's in there, in my videos. Ori Orion, my third son, was not affected by myotonic dystrophy at all. He didn't carry it. So it can be very, very variable. It's 50-50 it's every time. So I hope that that answers some questions. And honestly, I think I just wanted to share because it's actually quite a rare condition and it is something that I have, but I don't feel defined by it. And I will continue to live my life as fully and as happily as I can for the foreseeable future. So thanks for tuning in. And if you listened all the way to the end, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up subscribe for more personal content and also arty crafty um, videos and vlogs and tutorials so i will be back with another video really soon bye guys <laughs>